What's going on guys, CTA Prime back here again. Today I am super excited because I finally got my hands on the new AMD APUs and in this video we're gonna be testing out the all new Ryzen 5 3400G. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I absolutely love these AMD APUs. I've done a lot of videos on the 2200 and the 2400G. That was the last gen APUs. And now we finally have the 3400G, but it's not what I expected them to release. In all actuality, what we have here is a refresh of the 2400G. It's using a smaller die at 12 nanometer. It has the AMD Zen Plus architecture, but basically it's a 2400G with a higher base clock, a higher boost clock, and a higher GPU clock right out of the box. The new 3400G is priced at 150 US dollars, and inside of the box, we actually get a much better cooler for the 3400 over the 24. The last gen 22 and 2400 came with the Wraith Stealth. We're now getting the Wraith Spire with the 3400G, but if you buy the 3200G, you're still going to get the Stealth with it. For a $150 budget APU, the specs are actually pretty impressive. Four cores, eight threads, base clock 3.7 GHz with a boost clock of 4.2, built-in Radeon RX Vega 11 graphics at 1400 MHz, and a TDP of 65 watts. So it kept the same TDP as the old 2400G, but they've upped the base clock, the boost clock, and the GPU clock right out of the box. So in this video, I wanted to do some testing with the 3400G, mainly PC game testing for this video here. I've also thrown in some benchmarks, but I do have several more videos coming up, like a dedicated emulation video for the 32 and the 3400. Plus, I have a super small form factor build video coming up, so definitely stay tuned to the channel if you're interested in seeing this. So with all the testing I'm doing today, I wanted to give you the specs of what I'm running here. We have that Ryzen 5 3400G, a gigabyte B450M DS3H motherboard, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3200 megahertz, and it's running in dual channel mode, a 500 gigabyte Crucial MX300 SSD, and a 500 watt power supply. And I'm going to be running Windows 10 Pro 64 bit. All right, so let's get right into it. I do want to mention before we get started here that I have not overclocked a 3400G whatsoever on the CPU or the GPU side. I plan on making a video later on down the road so we can get a little better performance out of this. But I did want to show you the specs real quick. 3400G, base clock 3.7, boost to 4.2, 16 gigabytes of DDR4, 3200 megahertz RAM, and the Vega 11 graphics. Now these are clocked at 1400 megahertz, up from 1250 on the 2400G. And speaking of the 2400G, I will be comparing most of these benchmarks with the 2400G along with some other CPUs. So the first thing I did was open up 3 d Mark and run a quick time spy. On the 3400G, total score was 1330, GPU 1191, and CPU 3977. As you can see, we're up from the 2400G, but not by that much. I mean, really, it isn't that much of a difference here. And the 2400G can be overclocked to match the clocks of the 3400G, the out-of-the-box clocks of the 3400G. I'm pretty sure we got some headroom on this new 34, so I will be doing an overclocking video to see what we can really get out of this thing. Next up, Geekbench 4, and this was actually a little surprising to me. I know we have higher boost clocks on the 3400G, but I wasn't expecting to score this much higher in the multi-core section. And we even gained a decent amount in the single core performance on the 3400G over the 2400. In Cinebench R15, the 3400 scored an 834. Now this is all multi-core here. The 2400G, 1818. The 2200G, 566, and the i3-8100 at 568. And again, in the past, I've overclocked the 2400G and I've scored higher than the stock clocks on the 3400G, but we've yet to overclock this one also. And finally, a quick blender render test. Now this is all on CPU, we're not using the GPU for any of this. The 3400G did the BMW benchmark in 2 minutes and 20 seconds, 24 did it in 2 minutes and 30 seconds, 2200G, 3 minutes and 29, and the i3-8100, 3 minutes and 10. So we had a 10 second difference between the 34 and the 24, and this is all attributed to those higher boost clocks. So let's get right into some game testing. First up, we have GTA 5, still one of my favorite games of all time. 1080p, normal settings, no MSAA, averaging on the 3400G, 56 FPS. On the 2400G, 55 with the same settings. 
And keep in mind, your results may vary from these that I have here, but I've recently tested the 2400G with all the games you're about to see, and we only gain one FPS in GTA 5. Project Cars 2 is a little different. The 2400G averaged 38 FPS, 1080p, medium settings, no MSAA. The 3400G, 43 FPS. Here we have Doom, 1080p, medium settings, using the Vulcan back end. The 2400G averaged 48 FPS, the 3400G, 52. Taking some of the settings down to low in this game with the 3400G, I was averaging 64 FPS, so we got a really nice playable frame right here. CSGO 1080p medium settings, I am playing with bots here. On the 2400G, 108 FPS average. On the 3400, 123. So we got a nice little boost here. Rocket League, 1080p on the performance setting. 3400G, 82 FPS on average. 2400G, 74 FPS. And finally, for the gameplay test, we have Skyrim Special Edition, 1080p, medium settings. I was expecting this to do a little better, but on average with the 3400G, we're getting 36 FPS. With the 24, I was getting 32. Forza Horizon 4, low settings, 1080p, average FPS on the 3400 was 53, on the 24, 46. So far I've tested around 9 or 10 games, and here's the results for the rest. Another thing I like to do with these APUs is test the total system power draw from the wall. I'm using a wattometer at idle, 37.9 on average, gaming, 119.6, and my extreme test, which consists of running Time Spy and Cinebench at the same exact time, 157.2 watts. So this thing can get up there, but this is a very extreme test and most people won't be hitting this. So in the end, the Ryzen 5 3400G is a bit of an upgrade over the 2400G, but really not by much out of the box. With some overclocking, we can achieve much better performance with the 3400G. And like I mentioned, if you want to match the out-of-the-box performance of the 3400G with your 24, just do some overclocking with it. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Definitely stay tuned to the channel because I have a lot more coming up on the 3200G and the 3400G. I want to get some emulation testing out of the way, and I also have an awesome super small form factor build coming up. So it'd be really cool if you could hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel, but like always, thanks for watching.